Hi, welcome back to Word on Wednesday. It is lovely to be with you. Um, if you don't know me, my name's Megan. Um, I'm Linda's daughter. I am Graham's niece who did last week's Word on Wednesday. Um, I've just finished a degree in theology. Um, I'm married to Zion and we actually live in a bus. It's like a converted bus. This is it. Um, and yeah, I'm here with you this evening if it's evening where you are. Um, and we are looking at 2 Timothy chapter 2 verses 1 to 13. Um, and the title I've been given, the sort of theme, is Revelation and Spiritual Understanding. So before we start anything, let's just pray together. Just thank you so much Lord Jesus, that we can study your word. We thank you that you speak to us, God, that you you reveal things to us through prayer, through experience of you, and through your Bible, through your word. And um, I just ask, Lord, that we would we would know more of your truth at a deeper level this evening, that we would have a deeper understanding of... Um, what your gospel is and the power of it in our lives Lord I pray that you will guide what I say um, that it will be accurate to what you are wanting to say in the name of Jesus Amen it's always a really really good um, idea just to sort of have a quick look at an overview of a book especially if it's a book like this one which is a letter so if you if you found I don't know maybe you're looking through your attic and you found a letter and it was from your great great granddad and he was writing to somebody and um and you wanted to sort of understand the letter accurately and well you'd want to sort of find out some things you'd want to think about who your great great granddad was what did he do what year was he writing in who was he writing to why was he writing to them what was what was the context what was happening at the time what was his motive for writing you know there's loads and loads of questions that we'd ask if we just found a letter from history and um this is a letter from history it is the word of god but there's also a context to the letter and it's just as important that we know that context because the context helps us understand the meaning of of what it's saying a lot more um and also why why in what ways it is applicable to us now as christians in the modern day so um we'll just look at a quick overview that answers some of those questions uh and just to give you a, a recommendation on if you want to do this for any book of the Bible, you can go to esv.org. So ESV stands for um, English Standard Version, which is just a translation of the Bible. But if you go to their website, esv.org, um, you and then you can just find summaries of all the books of the Bible. They'll give you a really quick overview of what it's about, who wrote it, kind of key themes, stuff like this. So for 2 Timothy, they tell us that um, Paul wrote this second letter to Timothy during his second imprisonment in Rome shortly before his death. This imprisonment, in, <laughs> this imprisonment was after the one recorded in Acts 28. He probably wrote it in AD 64 to 65, though some would place it as late as 67. So this this is the last letter that we have from Paul in terms of time. The last one that we have in the Bible that he wrote, it's the latest letter from Paul. Uh, he is in prison. He is in prison because he's been sharing the gospel, setting up churches. Um, and he's saying that Jesus is Lord rather than Caesar, the Roman ruler, is Lord. Um, and also, so he's been in trouble with the Romans and he's in trouble with the um, Jewish teachers at the time who, because he's making a claim that Jesus was the Messiah, he was God, he's fulfilling the Old Testament. Um, and Jewish people don't think that. They think the Messiah is still going to come. It wasn't Jesus. And he's claiming it was. 
So he's in trouble with both these people and he's regularly put in prison and persecuted and and has suffering because of what he's doing. Because he's he is intent on sharing the good news of Jesus and um, helping people to follow Jesus. He set up loads and loads of churches and he's writing to Timothy and Timothy um, was a very, very close friend of Paul's. He was sort of his protege in a way um and he is actually he's actually coming in to sort of help at the church in Ephesus um and that's why Paul's writing to him he's writing to him from prison and he's talking to him about um kind of how to lead people well in Ephesus and the church there um and he's talking about suffering for the gospel so on ESV it tells us the main theme of this book is Paul giving a bold clear call to continue in the gospel despite suffering um, and Uncle Graham sort of spoke about this briefly didn't he last week in his big overview he talked about suffering and endurance and persevering for the gospel um, in the middle of it and that is what this passage really dives into so let's read the passage now I'll read it through and then we will just go through kind of section by section and look at what that means and how it relates to revelation and spiritual understanding. Before I do that, revelation, the word, um, you might think of it as, you know, there's a book of, Bi- of the book of the Bible, revelation at the end of the Bible. Um, but the word itself just means to sort of learn something new, something that reve- is revealed to you. Um, and in this case, specifically, something that is revealed by God. So people have revelation through visions. So the book of Revelation was a vision that John had that, that God gave him, that told him things. Um, or dreams, or just praying and hearing the voice of God. But definitely through the word of God um and spiritual understanding therefore is is how we interpret it well if we hear something from God how do we make sure we're interpreting that um in a way that's accurate and true and in line with God's will in line with God's word we have a good understanding of 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 what that is that at least that's what I'm taking this to mean in light of this passage so let's read let's read this passage thinking about what we've just learnt about the context of it and thinking about revelation and spiritual understanding. You then, my child, be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses entrust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Share in suffering as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No soldier gets entangled in civilian pursuits, since his aim is to please the one who enlisted him. An athlete is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. It is the hard-working farmer who ought to have the first share of the crops. Think over what I say. For the Lord will give you understanding in everything. Remember Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, the offspring of David, as preached in my gospel, for which I am suffering, bound with chains as a criminal. But the word of God is not bound. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they may also obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The saying is trustworthy. For if we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. So, verses 1 and 2, let's start there. You then, my child, be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Verse 1. 
you've already looked at grace, I think, in one of these words on Wednesday, so I won't spend time too much time there. But what Paul is saying is in the face of suffering, in the face of perse- pers- um, persecution, um, be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus. So he's not saying, oh, the reason I could get through all of these really hard times is because I'm Paul and I'm amazing. Like, <laughs> I have this like poolness about me that I can handle it. He's not saying that. He's saying we are strengthened by Jesus. We are strengthened by the gospel of Christ and the, the change it has in us. Um, we are strengthened through the transformation of who we are into new creations, the renewing of our mind, the Holy Spirit living inside of us. We are strengthened by the good news of Christ and knowing it and knowing it. Yeah, having a good understanding of what it is and what it means and what it does. That's what that what gives us endurance. And he says that um, he tells Timothy to pass on what he's preached to faithful men. The word men here in Greek is, uh, sorry, this is in my footnotes. Um, always look at a footnote. Uh, anthropoi, right? And that says it can refer to both men and women depending on the context. So he's just saying entrust it to people who are going to teach it faithfully. Who are gonna who are gonna stand by it because the gospel is unchanging. The gospel isn't affected by the world's understanding. It is not affected by what the most popular philosophy is at the time, what Jesus taught, what Jesus did, and why that matters and what it does is the same. Jesus said it himself, didn't he? He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. And so Paul's telling Timothy, make sure the people that you that you um, give this gospel to, that you want to teach a, a trustworthy, a faithful, are going are gonna to tell it truthfully and well and not change it or edit it um, to fit other people's expectations or for their own, their own gain. Um, and there's loads in the New Testament about false teaching and the dangers of it. So you you can look into that. Um, Titus, Jude, the good places. The reason why it's so important in terms of spiritual understanding is it, it needs to be framed. The gospel is framed within a biblical worldview. So the way that we look at the world and we understand what's going on is based in the narrative of the Bible. The narrative of the Bible, in a really, 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 really quick nutshell, is that um, God made human beings and they chose away from him. They chose to rather than live in his image of love, to live in the image where they get to decide what they want to do, what's right, what's wrong. We call it sin. It's sin. And um, part of that is there is another, there's the devil, the enemy that is wanting people to to, to not be in the fullness of creation that God has for them, but to be um, living away from that in, in darkness, right? The Bible uses words like truth. It uses, so juxtaposition, okay? Juxtaposition is like the the, the contrast of two words. So it, to, to illustrate this, the Bible says there's truth and lies, there's light and there's darkness. There is the way that is good and the way that leads to destruction. Um, and so... Jesus is Jesus is coming incarnation and his death and his resurrection and his ascension is the way that God gives us a way to enter back into the truth and back into the light and back into living in a way of righteousness rather than the way of sin to be born again into a new creation that is what what God wants for us what he's created us for and Jesus has has done that but the reason we share the gospel is to give people the the um the opportunity to to take it to to go through Jesus and and um be a new creation and be restored to that that place with with their father with God their creator and so that's really important that when we come into suffering that we think about what that means and what suffering is about so moving on to um verse three right so share in suffering as a good soldier of christ jesus share in suffering that phrase is actually one word in the original greek so this this was written in in greek um and 
and it's kind of like sharing hardship together with one so it's doing it together is the very nature of the thing um so we're not on our own when we're in suffering we are in christ and isaiah 52 verse 14 tells us that christ was marred beyond any recognition more than any other man he suffered more than anybody else in order to reconcile us to god so we are in christ when we share in suffering we're sharing in what christ has done and equally we are with the the church with all our brothers and sisters in christ this is our mission to um, bring people out of the darkness and into the light um, looking ahead to the day where all things will be restored so we are good soldiers and there's i think there's two main things why we're soldiers of christ therefore in this like biblical worldview um is that we are firstly we are standing on the side of truth against the side of darkness against the side of lies so there's a spiritual battle going on and we're on the side of christ jesus who's already won but but we're still in the battle and also the other thing about being a soldier is obedience the only way a good army works is if people obey the person that is leading them they have to work as a team and follow orders and um in Luke 11 verse 28 Jesus Jesus says himself blessed are those who hear the word of God and obey it so blessed are those who hear what Jesus teaches what Jesus says and obey it and do it practically do it in verses 4 to 7 then um, Paul gives us some illustrations of this of a soldier again and of an athlete and of a farmer and all these illustrations are showing us how we are to live um, in light of the understanding that we have of the gospel. He says in verse 7, you know, the Lord will give you understanding in everything. So a soldier, an athlete and a farmer, the common thing between all of these three is they have a clear goal, don't they? A soldier's fighting to win a war, an athlete is working to win a race, um, and a farmer is is working to reap good crop and there's a whole you could do a great bible study on the looking at seeds and crop and what that means in the bible and it's it's again in biblical terms it's bringing people into into truth out of lies it's that salvation of people so they all have a common goal and um there's something here about obedience as well the soldier is obedient to the orders of the commander only Paul says that the soldier doesn't get entangled in civilian pursuits since his pleas, uh, his aim is to please the one who enlisted him. So the soldier doesn't get distracted by what the world's arguing about. We shouldn't be distracted by what the world is arguing about and saying we need to only be focused on what God is telling us to do, what Jesus is telling us to do, and that is to bring the kingdom and to, to save people and to disciple people and to teach people and to baptize and and heal the sick and cast out demons it's the things that jesus tells us to do um, at the end of the gospels and an athlete's not crowned unless he competes according to the rules so this again is this importance of this 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 understanding of a biblical worldview is that there is a way to live that that is righteous that is godly and and we are taught it in the word of God and that is what we have to live by that is the rules we live by yeah and the hard-working farmer who ought to have the first share of the crops so we are to be hard-working we are to 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 be continuous if you think about farmer I mean the weather today has been awful but but they keep going because they know what they're going after and we have a reward in heaven we we will get to be living with Jesus forever and we are bringing in the crops now the, the people into salvation think over what i say for the lord will give you understanding in everything so he's saying that, that the teaching is super important but also the lord will give you understanding and this is really important whenever we come to the bible whenever we read the word of god whenever we think we've heard something from god we need to ask the lord um and we have 
God dwelling inside of us in the Holy Spirit, right? And we have Christ as our mediator. So he's the one that we, our prayers go through that means we can, we can um, be directly in contact with God. And God speaks to us. He speaks to Christians in the modern day. I've had so many times he's done it to me. Sometimes it's an audible voice. Sometimes I get a picture. Sometimes you just have like a knowing in your knower. <laughs> um, and what he's saying is it's so important that everything we do, every act, every practical thing that we do in our lives as a soldier, as an athlete, as a farmer does, that we do it... Um, in line with the Holy Spirit, what the Holy Spirit's saying to us, that we check everything. And another place that talks about this is when Paul talked about the gift of discerning of spirits. It's the, that, that discernment between what is true and what isn't, what's in line with God's will and what isn't. And we must always go with what's in line with God's will. And I think we could put loads of big words around that. We could talk about you know revelation and spiritual understanding sounds very grand doesn't it but it's very simple really if you read your bible if you spend time in the presence of god you'll know when it's him um and we've been put in community as well in fellowship with brothers and sisters who who we're told to you know weigh up prophecy together weigh up things together and check with each other and um and discern if it's god um so we've been equipped with everything we need for that so verses 8 to 10 then Paul gives a summary of what this gospel is what it is that we are putting our hope in and what what frames our understanding of everything he says remember Jesus Christ risen from the dead the offspring of David he's risen from the dead he is the Lord this goes back to what I said he was being persecuted for he is Lord nobody else he's defeated death he's defeated sin and he is king and he's the offspring of David, meaning he's the Messiah. He's the one that was promised in the Old Testament that fulfills the Old Testament. Um, and again, he's king. And he says he's, he's preached that. That is what he has preached, the true gospel. And he is suffering for it, bound in chains as a criminal. But the word of God is not bound. And again, this is another thing of our understanding of the biblical worldview and our place in it. We could be put in chains. But the good news of Jesus Christ can never be put in chains. Ever. Never. It's, he's, he's already won. He's already on the throne and he is coming back to renew everything. There is nothing that can stand in the way of that. And that's partly why we can endure suffering. Because we know that. We have that understanding of, of where we sit in this biblical worldview. Of our, we have a deep spiritual understanding of what that means. Therefore, he says, I endure everything for the sake of the elect. And the elect are um, just those who will obtain salvation. Yeah, that's what he says, obtain the salvation of Jesus Christ. So the people who are followers of Christ and the people who will become followers of Christ, that is what he's, he's, he's enduring this for, because that is what we are called for. And that is you and that is me. And it's all the others who will walk in the truth, in the light, rather than in the darkness. It, okay and so we are in a battle that's one of the biggest things here we endure suffering because we are in a battle what is the weapon of our warfare well you can go and look in ephesians chapter six about the armor of god i would really recommend that after watching this go and go and read ephesians six because also it reminds us there that our battle isn't against flesh and blood but is against um the principalities and powers the spiritual it's a spiritual battle that we're in between darkness and light so go go read ephesians 6 for more about this of how we're equipped to um endure um and persevere through suffering and then paul in this section then then has this lovely hymn probably or a poem the way it's laid out looks like that let's just read this there's he really summarizes what he's just said it this little four lines is about who god is and who we are in relation to him through jesus christ and it is a confession of 
of confession of what is true that sets us that sets us free. He talks about if we deny him, he denies us. So it's it's when we affirm who Jesus was, when we say I believe. You know, Paul says, whoever whoever um, says that Jesus Christ is Lord will be saved. Right? I think he phrases it slightly differently, but but it's that it's admission of who Jesus is is true. That is true. That that means we can then be related, uh, restored to to Father God to God through Him. Um, now it says if we do this if we do this so we have a choice here it's an if right we we have a choice to die with him we have a choice if we're going to endure we have a choice if we deny him or if we are faithless god is unchanging that's the other thing this tells us he will remain faithful if we are faithless he will not deny himself he can't deny himself the nature of who god is never changes he's the the shepherd that is seeking after the lost sheep he's the one who's who's saved us through christ if, if we come and we we believe that and we live that there's a couple of questions i've got for you that um will probably be in the the little description under this so how does having this biblical worldview change the way that we respond to current events endure persecution and suffering engage with fellow christians in the church and how does it affect the way we choose what information we base our decisions on there's those questions and also i just encourage you to think about you know what spiritual understanding means what revelation means um what are ways in which you can ensure that what the way that you're hearing god is in line with his will and is is true and good because it's so important that we listen to the the voice of god he is our commander in chief he is our um the the one who makes the the rules the one that we're following and it's so important that we listen to his voice and we know how to hear his voice it will be through the bible and it will be in prayer and spending time in the presence of god too um so i just pray for everybody watching that they would know your voice father god that they would know your voice that you would give them guidance through the Holy Spirit, our advocate, our teacher, our guide. That they would have greater revelation and spiritual understanding. That they would see the world through your eyes, through the way that it is, the, the truth of the biblical worldview. That they would know their place in it. That the gospel would seep deep in their hearts. And that they will endure any persevere in any suffering that they would have perseverance through any suffering because they know the hope they have in Jesus Christ our anchor I pray that in Jesus name may the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you so go now with grace and peace if you can talk to someone else about um, these questions amazing if not can i encourage you just to take some time um even just five or ten minutes or when you're driving somewhere just to ask god about it just spend some time with god and and just to ask him about what we've talked about tonight or or read the passage again and, and just ask the holy spirit to speak to you over it um thank you so much for listening and i really hope this blesses you i've had a great time looking into it myself so i will see you soon and it's been really fun god bless bye